Hi everyone, this is Andrew Tai and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be looking at this late 2012 21.5 inch iMac. Now the issue with this particular computer is that the internal hard drive is just not working at all anymore. And this is pretty standard for any device with an internal hard drive and especially iMacs made by Apple. They tend to degrade very quickly for some reason and I've replaced a lot of these over the years. So um, this is the late 2012 iMac which means that the um, the hard drive which is inside here uh, has to be accessed by um, using special tools to cut the adhesive that runs around the edge and it's a bit trickier than the earlier iMacs where you could just pop the screen off, put the hard drive in and pop the screen back on. So this pack contains the adhesives needed to um, reapply the screen back, the glass back on, and it's got the specialized cutter as well. So you can buy these separately or in a pack. And um, basically you cut the edges of the adhesive off so you can pull the screen off. So um, these are very handy tools to have, and I will leave a link in the description. I mean, this particular one's by The Tech Doctor, and it's a professional repair kit for the iMac specifically designed for this. So I'm going to give this a go now. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is use this cutting wheel. So the reason we use this is because um, if we use a credit card or something sharp, we can potentially cut cables like the camera cable, which we don't want to do. And this limits the amount of damage you could potentially do to your wiring. So you just kind of make sure that this wheel's in place, nice and attached. And then we kind of work from the work from the edge. Just insert it between the um, the glass. I'll just try and show you a bit more clearly. You know, it goes right in like this. And then if I just work my way around, I can hear this and feel this kind of adhesive cutting through. Just going to go back a bit so I can show the whole thing. So this just works all the way around. And you know, they, they give you multiple of these cutting wheels because they need to be super thin, but also be able to be strong enough to cut through the adhesive. And this one's already not done so well. Yeah, so once you get it in, it's go around the corners. All the way around the top. Just be a bit lighter on the, the, the webcam. Go all the way around here. I think I might need a new wheel on this one. That one's kind of dead. Just popping that there. Going all the way around again, just to check. So we're not quite done, we just need to keep going. So I used to be quite nervous about doing this upgrade, which is why I often recommended people, if they felt nervous about it, to just install the um, install the uh, solid state drive externally, which works quite well to be fair. Uh, but this one, I'd like to do a full repair so it can be refurbished and resold. So the best way to lift the screen up is to now put it on its back on the and so it's lying on the table. And then we can kind of lift it with fingernails at this stage. Now this doesn't need a suction cup in my opinion, but um, you'll often see people doing repairs using a suction cup, but not really necessary. Just, unless you do a lot of these, it's not necessary. So the screen is connected to the logic board with these cables. So I'm just gonna take these off so I can remove the entire screen. Um, they're a little bit awkward to get to. So um, I've just taken off this cable, which has got this 
pull tab on it and then um, that should be it. So these two cables come off and then um, I'm going to lift up the screen and uh, you can kind of hear a bit more adhesive on the side there. That's the bottom adhesive and then now I can lift up the whole screen. That's done. So um, now that we've got the screen off, we are going to do the solid state drive upgrade. So I've got this um, 250 gigabyte um, solid state drive from Crucial, and I'm going to be replacing the hard drive here with it. The only tool you really need is uh, a T10 screwdriver. So I'm going to pull off these um, four screws, which hold these brackets on the drive. Easier to keep screws with the bracket, so you, you do know where they are. And put this one here as well. And so now we can lift out the internal dead hard drive. And um, you can see it's got the standard kind of SATA connectors here, which I'm going to pull out. And uh, we're left with this uh, kind of shock absorber, which is unnecessary with a solid state drive. But um, we can now pull this off. Okay. Now we're going to dump this hard drive and we're going to replace it with this spanking new. 250 gigabyte crucial solid state drive. So this part is um, simply inserting it back into this shock absorbing kind of bracket. It's just, um, it's kind of silicon and it would absorb the vibrations of the hard drive so it would be less noisy. Um, Anyway, we're going to put these uh, connectors back on exactly in the same arrangement as the hard drive. And then I'm going to slot this back into its position. Nice and secure there. So all we need to do now is pop the brackets back on. That's good. Okay, great. So um, at this stage, it's a good idea to do any kind of cleaning that you want to do. Um, if you wanted to upgrade the RAM, you'd lift out the logic board and then pull the, you know, replace the RAM sticks, but I'm not doing that today. Um, I've got some compressed air. I'm going to use to just blow this fan out because it's super dusty. Nice little courtesy clean for the mobile biases computer. All I'm going to do is just use a little plastic spudger and I'm just going to pull the uh, the remaining adhesive off. And this probably is the thing that takes the longest out of this process because it wasn't that hard to get the screen off. It wasn't that hard to um, change the solid state drive, but this thing just involves a bit of finicky work. And sometimes if the glue is really old, it um, takes ages to fix. It'll pull off because it comes off in little chunks. But this one's doing pretty well. We're doing, you know, I'm pulling one off and all in 
strips or this part hasn't but it will do You can use some of this um, isopropyl alcohol to work a little bit on the adhesive and it's perfectly safe to use on electronics. Um, so at this stage we are going to test it and see, make sure that the solid state drive is detected properly. And uh, this is a highly recommended step um, because you just want to check that everything is working correctly. So um, I'm going to put the screen back in and it's going to be on a kind of temporary basis. So um, you can't see it at the moment, but I'm going to hook the uh, cables we disconnected in and um, pop them back in on this kind of temporary basis. So we're going to see it's working. Uh, so these cables slot in in exactly the same way we pulled them out earlier. So it's really highly recommended that we do this next step, which is just to double check that the solid state drive is connected correctly. And to do that, we're just going to go into the recovery partition and um, probably install the operating system at this stage. So uh, we're going to press Command R on the keyboard. Or if you've got a Windows keyboard, it's a Windows R. And um, as, as the time happens, this should cause the recovery window to come up. So we use our mouse to navigate to the, um, the Wi-Fi. And then we'll be able to do a internet recovery and install the operating system on the solid state drive. So once we've booted into the internet recovery window, what we want to do is run disk utility and check that the solid state drive is there. So um, I can see it's listed here and it's uninitialized. So I'm going to erase it and I'm going to make it into a standard hard drive. I'm just going to call it Macintosh HD because that's what they always call it. So once you've formatted the hard drive, we can go ahead and reinstall the operating system. Now this is going to installed 10.8, which is not ideal, but we can go through the um, upgrade stages. If you have a Mojave or a Catalina installer prepared on USB, you could use that as well, instead of going through this internet recovery. But I'm going to show you the kind of long way to do it, because I'm going to assume that you don't have these things prepared. So we go to reinstall the operating system and you know, make sure we're connected to the internet. And uh, we just click uh, continue here. agree and so we're just going to have a fresh installation of mountain lion and when we've got 10.8 mountain lion installed we're going to install um the the next version which is uh 10.9 and then from 10.9 we can jump straight into catalina so i'm just going to let that complete so um in order to get this imac to the latest version of the operating system we can't jump straight from 10.8 to 10.15, which is Catalina, which is the latest operating system at time of recording. So we have to take an intermediary step. So um, one good step to take would be to install High Sierra. And what we can do is just um, Google for the High Sierra App Store link. And then um, in the fourth stage here, there's a link directly to get High Sierra from the App Store. And um, when we do it this way, it's going to um, make it possible to install the later operating system on top of this when we're done. So once we've successfully installed High Sierra, which we've done here now, we can just go to the App Store and do the normal macOS Catalina operating system download. And this will take it to the latest version of the operating system. 
So when we have the, the window open, we just do the normal installation over the solid state drive. And there we go, just wait for a bit longer. So once you've made sure that the operating system is all up to date and running on the new solid state drive installed internally, what we're now going to do is do the final step, which is to put all of the adhesives back on so that the glass can stick to the computer. So um, what it's helpful to do is um, to arrange them in the shape that you know you're going to put them in. Um, and it starts from one in this corner and then it just goes around until we get to five here. So um, it's handy just to put them like that. This is the order that all of them seem to be seem to come in. Uh, this particular pack came from Amazon and I'll put a link in the description. Um, and then all we're going to do now is um, take up the glass and um, put the stickers back on. So I'm just going to show you how to do that. And um, now that, because we've already prepared all the adhesives already, uh, as in removing the old ones, we're just going to put the new ones back on now. So I'm just going to remove the backing and then put this in the correct position. So um, what's quite handy to have is something sharp. So normally I use a uh, screwdriver and um, you just kind of pop this little hole out and then pop this exactly where the hole is here. And um, we're going to do something similar here. So it's aligned exactly correctly. Yeah, so that's aligned very nicely. I'm going to put number two on. So once all the stickers are in, um, we just remove the adhesives, like so. So obviously this bit we need to make sure it's working. So um, when you've got the cables back in, it's kind of the last opportunity to check whether the screen is fully working. So it's a really good idea to plug in the power cable and just double check that everything's connected. So that looks pretty good to me. I am just gonna do a full shutdown. use some uh, screen cleaning cloths and some isopropyl alcohol just to clean this up a little bit and at the same time you kind of squeeze the, the computer so that it's make sure that the um, the screen is tightly held in Okay, so now I've got this computer all cleaned up. It's looking much cleaner and much nicer, and it's going to be ready for somebody to use very soon. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this video. If you found it useful, please like and subscribe, and please check out my next tech video.